So in today's video we are going to be speaking about Dion Pereira and his potential return to Bradford City and also we're going to be speaking about do we actually need to sign another winger. Now if you do go on to enjoy today's video please make sure to drop a like on it if you could try and hit 70 likes on today's video that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well we are now on the road to 7,000 subscribers so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification button. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below. Do you think we need Dion Pereira to return to Valley Parade but it's certainly something that's caused a little bit of debate over social media over the last couple of days with Dion been teasing some things on his Instagram story fingers crossed he does get announced before the end of the transfer window I think it ends on either Wednesday or Thursday one of them two days and we're still yet to announce the third kit so maybe we announce Dion Pereira in the third kit although the third kit has been leaked over social media but anyway make sure you drop a like on today's video subscribe if you are new as well and let's get into it so I did just touch on it there that Dion Pereira has has been teasing about a potential return to Bradford City. Now, obviously, at the end of his loan spell with Bradford City, he put like a compilation video on his Instagram, and the caption of that was, Thoroughly enjoyed my last few months here at Bradford. Want to say a massive thanks to the fans, coaching staff, and my teammates. Future is bright for this club. Thanks again, and hopefully see you soon with a winky emoji. Now, I think it was yesterday, he actually reposted that video and put it on his story so everybody could view it again. Now, he did also post some other pictures when he's been playing for Luton in pre-season, and all that sort of stuff but it certainly was interesting out of everything that he could have posted there was no clips of him at Atlanta or anything like that he posted this video of his time at Bradford City and a couple of pictures of how he's been getting on with Luton Town he's obviously played quite a lot for Luton in pre-season and he's not played all too much in the championship I think I don't play I don't think he's played at all I think he was on the bench for the opening game of the season but apart from that he's not even featured in a match day squad he did play in the AFL Cup though against Newport County in the first round where they lost 3-2 at home he actually got an assist in that game but if you have a look at Dion's stats then the last season for Bradford City he played 10 games at starting 9 averaging 79 minutes per 90 he scored 1 goal averaging a goal every 785 minutes he averaged 1.4 shots per game averaging 0.3 shots on target per game he also had 1 assist averaged 48.6 touches per 90 created 0 big chances but averaged 1.7 key passes per game he averaged 23.2 passes per game 80% of them being accurate he had a 91% passing accuracy in his own half, 73% passing accuracy in the opposition half with 67% of his long balls being accurate, 38% of his chip passes being accurate and 25% of his crosses being accurate as well. He was fairly good with the defensive stats as well, average 0.9 interceptions per 90, average 1.7 tackles per game, average 0.6 possession wins per game, he was dribbled past on 0.3 occasions per game and also average 0.6 clearances per game as well. Zero errors leading to a shot and zero errors leading to a goal. In terms of his other statistics, he averaged 2.5 five dribbles per 90, 61% of them have been successful. He also averaged six total duels per 90, winning 53% of them, averaging 5.7 ground duels per 90, winning 56% of them. He averaged 0.3 aerial duels per 90, only winning 25% of them. He was fouled on 1.5 occasions per game, and he also gave away 0.6 fouls as well. So his goals and assist stats aren't the greatest, but he averages a goal or an assist every five matches, which I don't think is the end of the world, but he's more of a, just a, a joy to watch type player like when he gets the ball he'll comfortably dribble it past two three players and then put a nice ball into the box or he's not necessarily going to get you 10 goals 10 assists a season but what he will bring you is a threat and he'll be like the the pre-assist if you get what I mean because he'll beat a couple of players then maybe play a ball out wide the ball will go into the box and that's when you'll score from it I think if he does come back again I can't really see him playing though as a right winger if we have a look at some of the players that we've already got at the club in terms of natural right wingers which where he did play last season under Mark Hughes I don't think he actually made an appearance for Derek Adams because he signed in the January and then he got an injury and a bit of illness, all that sort of stuff. It was an awful start for him. He didn't really play for like the first two, three months, something like that, of his Bradford City career. So Derek Adams was long gone, actually, before Dion even made his debut. I think his debut was away to Forest Green Rovers when we beat them 2-0 away from home. But back onto what I was saying, in terms of natural right-wingers that we've got at the club, I've got down here as Scott Banks and Emmanuel Osadibe as a natural right-wingers. In terms of natural attacking midfielders, I've got Jamie Walker, but then there's, I've got two players who can play there in Alex Gilead. And Levi Sutton's been playing as an attacking midfielder and as a right-winger to see games out in the opening few games of the season. And in in terms of left wingers, we've got Aboisa, Harry Chapman, Jake Young and Lee Angle. Now, with Mike Hughes' style of play, he likes his wingers to be inverted and cut inside. So, that would suit Dion playing on the right-hand side. But if you're going to play him on the right-hand side... That means you drop Scott Banks. Now, over the last couple of games, Scott Banks has been comfortably man of the match or very close to it in a lot of his most recent performances. So I think you can 
can't just drop Scott Banks for the sake of Deon Pereira. Banks, I think, offers a little bit more of a goal threat. We don't know the extent to Jamie Walker's injury at the moment, but we are seriously missing him in that number 10 position because Harry Chapman is by far and away not up to the standard that we thought we were getting from Harry Chapman. I'm still yet to see a good performance from Harry Chapman yet, or the expectation that we had of Harry Chapman. Granted, he has been playing out of position. He sees himself as a natural left winger, but even when he has played on there, I don't think he's done all too well. So if Dion does come in, I genuinely think he could compete with Jamie Walker in that attacking midfield role. If he does come in, I presume it will be on loan. I can't see him coming in on a permanent basis because Luton do value him very highly. They gave him a squad number as well, and like I said, he's featured in a couple of their matches so far this season. So Whatever happens, I don't think it'll be permanently. If it is a loan, which I think it probably will be, then it might only be until January and then they'll look to send him out to a League One club because that was their aim at the start of pre-season was to send him to a League One club because they thought that he developed well enough in his time with Bradford City, but they haven't found a suitable League One club for off him, which is why the option of him coming back to Bradford City became available as you know they simply couldn't find anyone or they couldn't find the perfect fit for him. There might have been some options of him, but uh, offers for him, sorry, but they might not have been able to find somewhere where it's going to guarantee him game time. If he comes to Bradford City and performs how he did towards the back end of last season, he is going to play. We're going to have to fit him into the squad. It might mean we put Banks out on the left because none of our left wingers have really been performing. Leangle, I think, has had a really poor start to the season. I'll do, I do think he's more of a striker than a left winger. Jake Young, like I said, he's very young. He signed on a three-year deal. He's maybe one more for the future rather than this season. Harry Chapman's been very underwhelming and Abouisa is constantly injured. I still don't know how long. He's going to be out for because he's got another hamstring injury but if Dion does come in I think it'd be an absolutely fantastic signing like I said previously on the channel I still felt we needed a winger before Emmanuel Osadibi's injury obviously got a double leg break he's going to be out until about March April time so his season is pretty much wrote off we then brought in Scott Banks who has been a fantastic signing for us if he keeps performing how he has been doing I would hate to say, but he could potentially be getting recalled by Crystal Palace in January and sent to a League One club if they do have that option to recall, in which usually in loans, a lot of clubs do have that option. So Banks, for me, was the Osadibe replacement, so I still felt we needed a, another winger. Aboisa is far too injury-prone. Liangle can be injury-prone as well. I think if we get Dion in, our squad in terms of incomings will be complete. I don't really see where we take anybody else out now. I don't really see us loaning anybody else out. Maybe Heath Richardson, but he's a backup, backup goalkeeper. He's never really they're going to play this season, although he might play in the Papa John's Trophy game tomorrow. If you want to see my match preview for the Sheffield Wednesday game, it will be exclusively available to tier three channel members. So if you've not already checked out the channel membership scheme, feel free to do that. Just press the join button next to the subscribe button. Prices start from as little as 99p a month. But finally, my thoughts on Dion Pereira. My overall thoughts is if he was to come back, I think it would be a fantastic addition. I would see him playing more as a number 10 rather than a right winger if Scott Banks keeps performing how he is doing. But hopefully he does come back. Hopefully the team these actually do mean something and we do manage to get a deal of the line but that is where i'm going to leave it for today's video if you have enjoyed please make sure to drop a like on there for me if you could join it 70 likes as I said at the start of today's video that'd be absolutely class subscribe if you are new as well we are now on the road to 7,000 subscribers so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell and it's free to do so and it does massively help out make sure as well to get your thoughts down in the comment section down below do you think dion Pereira will be a bradford city player by the time the transfer window slams shut and where do you think Dion will play as well? What would be your front three? Because that's what he's going to play somewhere in that front three if he does come. Where do you think Dion fits in there? I think it'll be Scott Banks on the right. Dion Pereira in the number 10 until Jamie Walker's available. And then maybe when Walker's available, you put Banks on the left, Dion on the right, and Walker in the 10. That's a very, very deadly trio to be honest with you but thank you very much for watching shout out to our current tier 3 channel member B Davies 211 have a great rest of your day and I shall see you all very soon for another video it'll be tomorrow for the Sheffield Wednesday at home match day vlog peace